So moving right along, um, Leela Moore is a lecturer at BA program in mysticism and spirituality at Zafat Academic College. She's an artist and she's a founder of Cybernetic Futures Institute in the United Kingdom. And the talk is about, um, and bear with me here, Technoetic Aesthetics of Revelation and Transcendence, the Horse in the Mind. Thank you. Leela. Thank you. In this presentation, I utilize the sensibility of technoetic aesthetics in order to demonstrate an interpretive study of imagery issuing from contemporary cultural and technological innovative products and events. In particular, the film Blade Runner 2049 and SpaceX Starman, the Tesla Roadster launch. I reflect on the themes of horse, horseman and rider as they are depicted explicitly or implied through aesthetic, metaphoric imagery and vistas generated by technological systems and their performance. The images seem to conjure current apocalyptic concerns on one hand and revelatory meanings with a sense of hope on the other end, which together invoke collective longings for transcendence. Firstly, it is important to introduce the technoetic context of this presentation. The term technoetic was coined by the British artist and theorist Roy Ascot and pretends to combinations of tech and nous, that is, technology and mind. Broadly, in Greek philosophy, the nous pretends to a deeply intuitive intellectual apprehension of first principles and truth. It is also a theological concept referred to as the active intellect of the gods and the divine. In principle, technoetic aesthetics bypass, bypasses the surface image of the world and allows an interpretive creative process that considers the interrelations of technology and mind, including the various religious and spiritual contexts. Interestingly, the imagery of the horse and the rider, oh, sorry, <laughs> imagery the, of the horse and the rider evokes the interrelations of mind and technology also in the mystical traditions of the Kabbalah. In Tikkunah Zohar, or rectifications of the Zohar in English, which is, the, which is a main Kabbalah text, first published in 1558 CE. The Hebrew letters, which are perceived as divinely originated, are described as horses leading a chariot. The horse in this framework is depicted as a body of letters and the vowels are the soul that determines the direction, the movement, and the sound quality of the body that steers the chariot. In this way, the chariot as an advanced mystical technology is driven by divinely infused horse, which is in itself a body comprised of intellect and soul. During the 13th century, the Spanish-born Abraham Abulafia, the prominent exponent of ecstatic Kabbalah, disseminates his messianic and redemptive teachings in Southern Europe. Abulafia's path, according to Moshe Edel, produces a synthesis between Memonite's Aristotelian understanding of prophecy as the result of transformation of the intellectual flow, the nous, from which the active intellect uh, is translated into a linguistic message and techniques. Prophetic experience were induced by means of combinations of letters and their pronunciation breathing exercises, contemplations of parts of the body, movements of the head and hands, and concentration exercise. Abulafia devises techniques for the attainment of ecstasy and prophecy, which he comprehends as the goal of the mystical path achieved through revelation. For example, he develops a technique for the summoning of the mystic double, 
as manifested in, a, in the height of a trans-induced ecstatic state. The vision of the double is comprised of an image that reflects the active intellect as it is rendered by the mystic uh, by the mystic imagination, thus the revealed manifested image is based on an influx of nous from the active intellect of the divine that the double mirrors. To achieve the prophetic mystical experience, Abulafia techniques involve trampoline. It describes the mystic's body as a rider racing a horse joyfully and ecstatically while the horse trampoles beneath him. Abulafia writes that the mystic rides his intellect as it were a horse, eating it with a whip to ensure that his imagination stands where his intellect wills, a sign of great power and truth. Hence, the horse represents the noose, the highest degree of active intellect that after much training can manifest the purified, crystal clear, and mirror-like imagination into an external revelatory form. Moreover, Abu Lafia's prophetic books of revelation include apocalyptic imagery and scenes that are interpreted as pointing to spiritual processes of inner redemption. Overall, I imply that Abu Lafia mystica that Abu Lafia's mystical technique is essentially technoetic in principle and aesthetic. And I'm now going to talk about um, Blade Runner films. And mentioning Abu Lafia in this context is, um, may sound um, uh, imposed, but apparently, as we talked with Eleanor yesterday, it is really important to uh, relate to what um, artists write about a world, about their work. And Philip K. Dick, uh, who is uh, the inspiration behind, behind the Blade Runner films, actually confessed in a letter to a friend or colleague that he was possessed by the spirit of Abraham Abulafia when he was writing um, his novels. So uh, there is a, I'm not suggesting any direct link, but I'm saying that there could be a subtle correspondence between uh, these ideas. Uh, in the original, sorry, in the original uh, Blade Runner film from uh, by Ridley Scott from 1982, the central protagonist Rick Deckard is a Blade Runner, which is his job title as exterminator of replicants. The replicants are highly evolved bioengineered bioengineered androids that challenge humans physically, emotionally, and intellectually. In a mesmerizing atmospheric scene, Deckard is shown slumping drunkenly over a piano, eating the piano keys with one finger, then his sleepy eyes suddenly opening. At that point, we see the vision that transpires in his mind's eye. Interestingly, it is not an ordinary dream, but a mental vision of a magnificent white unicorn running in a forest towards him and the screen. As the unicorn fills the screen, there is a fusion between the film screen and the, the screen of Deckard's consciousness. The viewer's consciousness is also immersed in the vision of the unicorn. The image could be seen metaphorically as the manifestation of the active intellect steering the plot in an enigmatic direction. Thus, Deckard's vision is not merely a dream, but may be deciphered as a noetic reflection in which the active intellect and the imagination produce together a crystal clear apparition of a unicorn as a prophetic messenger. The unicorn as a symbol, as a symbol of pure love and virginity is in the film linked to Deckard and Rachel, uh, the, replicants, the replicant he falls in love with. In the light of the plot de development in Blade Runner 2049, the unicorn can now be interrupted, uh, could be interpreted as a coded prediction of a miraculous birth and the arrival of a brand new species of humanoids with the first humanoid child born of a female replicant, Dr. Anna Starline, the hidden, unlawful child of Deckard and Rachel. Anna lives uh, in an isolated, in an isolated capsule, isolation capsule due to a genetic illness. Anna plants a childhood memory of a wooden horse back into the collective consciousness of her race in a professional capacity as the chief designer of replicants' memories. 
But in the case of the leading protagonist, R Replicant K, also a Blade Runner, to whom the memory of the wooden raw horse was implanted by Anna, the horse becomes a tangible object. It is no longer only a memory, a dream or a vision, but an actual object that exists in both abstract mind and tangible reality. In K's world, only those who are born possesses a soul. And replicants like him, who are manufactured artificially, do not. The replicants, are, uh, the replicants are psychologically sustained by artificial designer memories. However, case memory of a horse was implanted via a transgressed act, as it is considered taboo to implant an actual memory into a replicant. This act of transgression has great ramifications. In the post-apocalyptic world of 2049, humanity is being annihilated in stages, beginning with the collapse of ecosystems, followed by the breakdown of computerized system and the deletion of all digital data, and most drastically, human consciousness continues to trans transfigure through complex hybrid android Life, form, life forms that draw on humanity's philosophical and ethical principles of the good, the true, and the beautiful. Indeed, the film ends with the words of Dr. Anna Styline, capturing and sharing Kay's last lived memories as he absorbs the beauty of snowflakes that fall softly on earth and on his injured, dying body. Kay, who has found true and good meaning and purpose in his life, dies contemplating beauty, the beauty of snowflakes. Immersed in Kay's memory, through his experience of consciousness, Anna says, beautiful, isn't it? In Blade Runner, the horse become a metaphor for the preciousness of conscious life, the invaluable gift of soulful memory that shapes a meaningful existence. Moreover, the horse may be perceived as a transcendent symbol belonging to a new people, both with and without a soul, in the conventional sense of the term. The soul may take on new meanings in light of the Kabbalistic motif of the horse as both body and soul, as well as the manifestation of the divine intellect. K, as the rider of his horse, indeed senses a powerful trembling. He actually trembles in the film, uh, which are associated um, with the disclosure of his true identity and destiny. Although Kay finds that he is, after all, a replicant, unborn and soulless, the horse in his mind is functioning as a technoetic device, a carrier of an insulted noose and comprehension, and above all, granted him the realization, and above all, granted him the realization and the lived experience of a dimension of transcendent aesthetics of the good, beautiful and true. What is more, the horse as a prophetic messenger of the divine intellect is also associated with a shared revelation concerning, concerning the collective destiny of Kay's people. The, the replicants who claim to excel humanity's exploitation of the mind and schemes of controlled procreation conspire to set themselves free and become, quote, more human than human, unquote. Although Blade Runner 2049 addresses current concerns regarding the disintegration and transfigurations or of our human biological and moral constitution as a result of advancing technologies, it is also proposes a reflection on the potential virtues of an age of singularity. While the film viewers are immersed in Kay's last experience in consciousness in 3D, one may ponder a future not that far away where technology and news could perhaps be harnessed to interweave and explore profoundly mystical aesthetics and revela revelatory visions. On February 6, 2018, over 2.3 million people came together online to watch SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch. It was YouTube's second biggest live stream ever, involving millions of concurrent, concurrent viewers. In this analysis, I focus on the aesthetics 
of uh, the Tesla Roadster Starman, not as an artwork, but as a cultural celestial object, as recently termed by, by NASA. The Starman is a dummy. Driver dressed in a spacesuit, it occupies the driver's seat of Elon Musk's uh, electric um, Tesla Roadster electric sport cars, and, and with one hand on the wheel and the other casually resting on the open window while embarking on a um, billion years of cosmic trajectory. Basing our, an our analysis on the anthropologist. Uh, Victor Turner's argument that the symbol can encompass contradictory meaning, Alice Gorman writes that the image of the red sports car is on one hand a symbol of elite wealth and masculinity, and on the other hand a talisman against death and mortality. Yet, in the void of space and the red sports car changes its colors actually and metaphorically, it becomes an object in eternity. I thus relate to it as uh, a present-day metaphor of, a, of an apocalyptic, apocalyptic horse and rider, as well as a Kabbalistic technoetic chariot. The notion of a Kabbalistic chariot is brought to mind and enhanced by the roadster payload, uh, in, entitled the Solar Library by the Ark Mission Library. It consists of the first of its kind storage data disks of the latest technology that are designed to archive human knowledge for billions of years. The roadster carries ARC 1.2 that stores Asimov's foundation series on which the central theme corresponds with the dissemination and preservation in hum of humanity's collective knowledge beyond Earth in the Milky Way. The significant addition transform the car into a carrier of human consciousness or mind, or a sample of mind, similar to the Kabbalistic chariot that functions as the carrier of the noose. The driver's rider is the navigator of the human imagination, which once launched into orbit is in affinity and carried by the celestial laws of the sublime intellect. Hence, whether the rider Hence, whether the rider is dead or alive is of no relevance at the stage of orbit in which the rider as a symbol of the intellect or the human mind becomes metaphorically, poetically and spiritually transcend transcendent. The cameras on the car broadcasted to Earth directly from space, a live webcast, join an awe-inspiring technological performance. The red car and the white spacesuit lost their uniformity and were immersed in and mixed with the bluish shades of the planet Earth, the radiance of the sun, and the, and the deep blackness of the void of space. Visually, the colors of the four horses of the apocalypse, white, red, black, and pale, are randomly reflected in the moving shades on the driver, rider, and the car. The object seems to subliminally, subliminally mirror our, apoc our apocalyptic anxieties, along with fears of exploitations uh, of technology. Colors in space look hyperreal and almost unbelievably sharp. Thus, for example, the red of the car and the white of the, of the rider could be intensifying the, in, intensifying the sensibility of masculine violence and treachery by means of war. Or as the car is gradually enveloped by the depth of blackness, the fear of emptiness may be associated with the mythic famine seen today in the depletion of Earth's resources and in consequences and in the consequences of climate change. As part of my ongoing creative practice and research in art as field of, as field of consciousness, I considered uh, the, the, the mass viewing of the event and therefore it was feasible to examine whether the event was uh, registered on the uh, Global Consciousness Network project on the random uh, generator on the random event generator networks, which explore the interrelations of mind and technology 
or mind of a matter. Now, interestingly, uh, the graphs of the data from the entire GCP, in short, uh, network during the two-hour period of the SpaceX launch, which were produced by Brian Williams, show a modest shift, you can see, downward, uh, away from randomness. Um, the downward trend then continue its steady descent, uh, as the graph shows, and we see an unexplained form of seemingly quantum entanglement between the timing of the liftoff and the downward shift. The aesthetics of the graph uh, triggered further reflections on the poetics of technology and mind. The rider's motion of ascent into other space contracts with the motion of descent on the graph, thus producing two-way trajectory as well as outward and in inward movements. The motion of the motion on the graph mirrors the physical gap as well uh, that was growing between the viewers on Earth, which followed the celestial object online, and the latter which was leaving them increasingly behind and downward. Yet the, the physical gap generated a contradictory sense of noetic closeness and inward movement towards communitas, which is a state of unity best explained by Victor Terra. Downward trends in, uh, in graph produced by the GCP usually occur during large group meditation and mass prayer events. Roger uh, Nelson explains them as traces of focused intention, where people are coming together with purpose to a shared positive goal. Clearly, this graph is not intended here as proof of collective consciousness acting on technology, but it serves to aesthetically uh, highlight a valid exploration. As we have seen in mystical Kabbalistic tradition, the horse and the riders are associated with the human imagination and intellectual capacity to interact with the active um, intellect. The chariot is a mystical symbol of technology that interacts with the mind. These archaic ideas are reflected in the aesthetics that currently associate the horse and the rider with electric cars and space age technology and encapsulate humanity in indestructible disks, arcs of consciousness, news as data sent to the cosmos. To summarize, films like Blade Runner 2049 uh, reflect current apocalyptic warning. Uh, the four horsemen appear as qualities and themes together with the horse in the mind, as the transcendent intellect that compel humanity to boldly address its set of ethics, the good, the true, and the beautiful. This could be provoked unexpectedly and unintentionally by cybernetic systems that enable people to participate and interact with them. The cybernetic system of the Tesla Roadster launch comprised of three symbolic objects, namely electric car, figure in a spacesuit, and a memory disk set on an orbit for eternity. It was broadcasted live from space on YouTube and generated a sense of cyberception. Cyberception is a technoetic term coined by Roy Ascot. It is a comprehension that arises when dry digital and moist biological systems interlock and give access to two different fields of experience simultaneously, psychic space and cyberspace, the material world and the virtual world outside it. These layers of experience occurred during the Tesla roster launch and were amplified by the virtual presence of the participants online as a network of minds, becoming a total of a network mind, field united in its purpose. The awe-inspiring view of the slowly gliding car and the objects unearthly used produced a space-time of trans transcendence for the network mind that contemplated it. The experience of the participants involved a sense of being both 
in the body and outside the body as participatory mind, which is akin to Abulafia's mystical technique involving being in and out of the body at the same time. Although many online events currently induce these, these states of cyberception in random ways and unintentionally, the context, scale, and mass viewing of the, of the Tesla Roadster launch presents an opportunity to examine the aesthetics involved in technoetic terms, speculating on technoetic modes of revelation. This cultural event showcased today's performance consisting of technology and mind, which reframe and would probably continue to evolve the religious imagination and the art of revelation and transcendence. Thank you. Thank you, Leila. Very interesting. Questions for Leila? Rebecca. Thank you. That was oh, some brilliant ideas coming through there. I wondered if you could talk to us a little bit about the language or imagery that commentators about SpaceX might have used. Was that particularly mythic? Did people kind of say this was a really mythical thing that's yes, happening? Apparently, yes. And, and, uh, this, and I actually immediately went to check it. And immediately, uh, there was a, a Wikipedia page. Uh, dedicated specifically for Starman as well. Oh. Yeah, and, and immediately some scholars actually reacted and wrote articles um, in different forums. I mean, I, I guess they didn't have time to actually produce journal let, uh, articles, but they already commented on um, what, I, what I actually quoted about the, 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 the talismanic um, aspect of the object and uh, the... the uh, the sense of um, combat against death and uh, also the political aspect. But yes, I mean, there were the, the idea of, of death and, um, and immortality and eternity, these ideas were, are already were expressed. Thank so you. yes, I mean, and I was really happy to find them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Michelle. Um, I'm just going to ask about Blade Runner because it's the only thing that I really can talk about with any of okay. interest. Could I just... Um, oh, it was really interesting, by the way. That's, that's why I can only deal with Blade Runner. Um, you were talking about the initial film and the unicorn motif. Yeah. And I just wondered if you could expand on that a little bit because you didn't mention that it's only in the director's cut. Um, and also in the director's cut, there isn't a voiceover. So in the original film... As um, it, it has that neo noir voiceover, the director's cut doesn't, and it's used far more as a symbol, unless I've misread it, as him being potentially a replicant. So I wondered. I mean, it has that almost stationary. You, you've sort of brought it to life with the news, but it, the, the flip side is it's quite a static image. And actually, when it moves across into Blade Runner twenty um, forty nine, it's the same sort of almost transparent image to tell us if you're thinking about ponies maybe something's been put in your head from the replicant bank because he gets the the folded paper from gaff yes yes so i just wondered if the two the tension of the two films and that addition in in the um the director's cut if you could just yeah i, I mean the, the the director's cut is obviously very interesting and i i i actually uh, when i was during the presentation, consider this very specific um, uh, scene where uh, Deckard has this vision. And uh, I think it appears twice in the film, also in the director's cut. It's not in unless I'm it, that's not in the director's cut. No, you're, you're right, Michelle. It's not in It's not, there's no so unicorn. Um, there's so, no yeah, unicorn yeah, in yeah okay, the okay. So I looked at the director's cut, and, uh, but it, it made a lot of sense only after watching 2049 for me. I see. Okay, because this is when I could make this speculation and these links. Before, before, before the, 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 the new film, it wasn't that apparent because it, it, it wasn't clear if the unicorn 
actually serve any purpose, but what happens and the continuation of the plot in 2049, the fact that, yes, it represents the bond between Deckard and Rachel, Rachel, and apparently, yes, they had a child, something that was impossible because replicants usually can't have children. So it was a sense of mir miracle. And then this type of love, symbolized by the unicorn, then developed into something very real, apparently, in the second film. So this is why I actually linked both of them. And, and um, in... Um, have you seen 20, uh, Blade Runner 2049? Yes. Yes, yes, because, uh, well, I could see a link, um, even um, a, a metaphorical link between the unicorn and, the, and then the little pony, uh, the horse. Uh, of course, it's not the same image, but it's, uh, it's, it, it, it sort of in, evokes a sense of enchantment because the unicorn is, is very enchanting uh, idea. And although it's only in the dire director's cut, Maybe it's actually, uh, well, I don't know, inspired the, direct, the current director to, to, take th to take that image and develop it further into a horse. Clear, clear, I mean, it clear the, the, there is that connection. It was just that it, it's used as a metaphor for a potential him being a replicant yes. himself in the director's cut, which is You mean Descartes? You yes. Mean, yes, of course. But, but, but yes, not in the original, that is not hinted no, at. No, 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 no. I mean, we, have, we are doubting his, 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 his identity even in the first film. And in the second film, we still wonder whether he's a replicant or not. And in a way, we do, I don't think it's very clear, but we get the sense that probably he is in the second, in the second, in the second film. Um, and this is why it's such a miraculous um, um, situation because because these replicants are becoming more human than human, and they these are the the characters in the film which uh, evoke the, these deeply bothering and philosophical questions. So yes, it started with a very small piece of paper, you know, this mannequin, but it turns into a very um, evocative, I think, object. Um, the pony is very emotionally charged in the second film, don't you think? No, no, it is. And thank, you, thank you so much. Lots of interesting things to think about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, time for one last question. Natasha. Um, thank you so much. So, yeah, some really interesting ideas there. Can you say a little bit more about this fascina fascinating idea of Abu Lafia? Is that how you say it? Isn't it? Abu Lafia is that you can be both in and out of the body at the, s at oh, the same yes. time. I mean, I can say quite a lot about it because, um, I, well, I'm not, a, I have to just stress that I'm not a religious uh, study scholar. So it's not my main, I, I'm, I'm an artist and theorist and scholar in the arts. And um, so I'm not an expert on Abulafia, but I did actually explore his work um, to a degree, because I was very interested in um, the notion of the double, and I actually uh, and the uh, summoning of the double as part of a ecstatic practice, and I actually uh, created an entire. I have a, another paper about it uh, because I created an artwork, and um, it's actually going to be uh, published soon. Um, in cybernetic and human knowing, this, this work on Abulafia and the double that I was, um, refer well, the idea that I re was referring to. But yes, Abulafia, so it's, it's something that I'm exploring. I'm still continuing to explore. But Abulafia devised a very interesting um, technique, which is about apparition, and it is about summoning. Um, a revel in a way, it's a form of revelation. It's summoning a double, it's summoning a vision, but the vision is apparently the double of the mystic. Okay, so you don't see, so, so the, 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 um, what is transpired, I mean, the image that arises and that the mystic sees and discuss with and talk with and receive messages from is not uh, an, somebody like a man with a beard, be, sorry, a beard, but, and, well, I was trying to say, it's not a sort of in a biblical, not yeah, yeah, but it's himself, but as rendered by, 
by, but in its highest form of, um, of, of, of um, existence. Uh, so it is, as it is rendered by the, by, um, the active intellect, so he gets a uh, higher understanding of his own image of himself and, the pro and, and what is interesting is that he's actually using metaphors like horse and riding and trembling and uh, when he describes his techniques, including uh, what I was just saying, I mean, the process of summoning the double. So it's, um, it's an interesting, um, um, well, um, I, it's interesting ideas coming together and uh, yeah. And I saw them reflected, strangely. I mean, I just found them uh, in Blade Runner. Uh, and then I thought, well, well maybe I'm not, because I'm very careful about imposing ideas or interpretations on films and um, works of art. It's like we talked yesterday. I mean, I prefer to actually refer to, to see what the artist um, has intended or have intended. Uh, so, um, in this case, I felt that I could dare uh, mention Abu Lafia with relation to Blade Runner because of um, uh, Philip K. Dick's uh, great fascination with Abu Lafia and he, uh, the fact that he himself was possessed by his own spirit. So maybe he had a, a vision or his own double transpired. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.